Hello everyone. If you're here with me when this goes live, it is Sunday morning. And if you're not, it's probably because you're not subscribed to me. So if you click that button in the right hand corner down below that says subscribe, you'll get notifications when I have new videos coming out. Now, this collaboration is between Chelsea from Paper Octeo and me. And what we have done is a series of videos concerning jelly printing and what you do with those jelly print papers once you have created them. So um, what we did initially, and it's part of the first part of this uh, video series, is we created a series of jelly prints for one another and exchanged those prints and then each week we have been creating using those prints. The first week uh, we did a canvas. The second week we did a journal page. This is the third, well actually the fourth because we did the jelly prints first, but um, project that we have done. And what I am doing is I am working with some Clearly for Art. It's a product, uh, by Wendy Vecchi, and I can't remember if it's Stampers Anonymous or Ranger that distributes that, but probably both, because um, she works with both of those companies. So you can probably find it in both places, and I'll put links down below to things for you if you're looking for product. But this is a plastic-like product, and when you glue your paper to it, retains that uh, see-through ability. That's why they call it clearly for art. Uh, but it also becomes pliable. So it, what our project is for today is to do something in 3D. Uh, when we talked about what we wanted to do, Shell said, well, can you do something 3D? And I said, well, sure. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we're doing. We're doing something in 3D. So I'm putting the uh, paper down with the printed side to the plastic so that you can see it through the surface because I want the shiny side up. I want that glossy um, surface and I, I want to have some shimmer off of this piece. And I'm also adding paper to the back side because I'm not sure how much of the back you're going to end up seeing. And this didn't work out real well, I'll tell you right now. Um, I would say that if you want something on the back side, print both sides of the paper, because some of those did end up coming off. But live and learn, right? So I set those aside to dry, and then, you know, I was thinking about the surface I was going to work on, and I had a wreath, one of those straw wreaths, and I thought, well, I could do something on that. And I thought, well, I have a pumpkin. I could do something on that. And then when I was looking around the studio, I came up with these two little uh, canvases. They were part of a group of canvases that I got in a discount distress sale a number of years ago. And they have burlap on the wrapping, and I put some gesso just to coat the top surface. And then I'm using some paints. These are the uh, Americana um, metallics. And there's a brown and there's a green and I can't remember what other color I pulled out, but looks like gold. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, there's an, a number of different paints that I go through here. And if you want to know specifics, I'll try to list things down below for you in the description. But, you know, as you're working through the process, this takes a number of hours to do, and you don't always remember everything. So I apologize, but, you know, you can always shoot me an email and say, hey, I didn't get what you were using there, and I really like it. Let me know. So... Okay, so what I've done is I've taken that once it was that clearly for art once it was dry and I die cut some shapes and I'm using some Tim Holtz dies these are the tattered florals and the 
tattered leaves and tattered pine cone and um, yeah just a, a number of those and I, the reason I'm using those is because they're big dies they're steel rule dies and they will cut right through this product now do you have to have dies to do this no you don't because you can very easily cut a flower out with a pair of scissors and you know make it your own I just happen to have these and I thought it would simplify things for me so you can see I'm heating the clearly for art and it's bending and I can mold it into uh, the shape of a flower just by heating and pressing and you can see they're stacking up and I'm going back in if you don't like it it's not a problem because you just reheat it that's the beauty of this stuff you can heat and reheat and reheat and keep on going until you get it in the shape that you want it in um, every time you reheat it it just kind of flattens back out so I continue to form flowers and this takes quite a while um, actually my fingers were kind of tired by the time I got done you'll notice that by the time I got done I started picking up a pair of pliers um, yeah these old hands said enough's enough <laughs> so but you can bend this stuff um, and I, I really wanted the leaves to look like there was veining in them you know how the the leaves bend at certain places so that's why I'm going down each leaf and trying to get a, a bend in each one of those little uh, tips on those oak leaves and uh, there's maple leaves and you know a number of different leaves there and then on the flowers also you know I've got several different shapes I've got the daisy and I'm just you know fluffing <laughs> fluffing those and curling them over the edge of my finger to make it rounded now when I attach these um, I'm going to use a couple of different types of glue I have some uh, Aline's tacky glue and that's good for the wet but I also want something to hold it in place while the tacky glue is drying so I get out my glue gun and I use both of these on the backs to put these layers together yeah you can see that this did take a little bit of time okay so my canvases are dry now I had put a coat of weathered wood on them hoping that it would crackle well it didn't do quite as much as I wanted but I'm still experimenting with this product too and trying to get it to the point where I get the surface effects that I want I don't know if I put too much on too little on not sure but I'm getting out my sprays I have some art anthology sprays and I thought that the colors on them coordinated pretty well with the colors of the gel print papers that uh, Shell had used so I'm doing that hoping that some of that creeps into whatever cracks I may have created on that surface um, using the weathered wood wood product from deco art and you see I have a few other die cut pieces and now I'm just starting to look at the canvas figure out placement see where I might need some more color uh, you know it's all about auditioning where things are gonna fit in the overall scheme of things now that was some art anthology in kind of a bluish purple and that's kind of more of a red purple and shell should like those colors because she's a purple girl and then I do add a few browns and golds and metallics for me so you know what can I say <laughs> you just can't take those metals out of me so um, I'm starting to like the drips and the effects and the you know aging process that's going on by adding these products and they don't look quite so pristine they, they look like they're old and that they've been around for a while and I like that look so I'm happy with that and yeah more sprays um, 
and stamping yes I got this is an old uh, Judikins rubber stamp that I had taken off of the wood block um, sometimes when you want to just get some texture on the background I use some gold um, delicata and stamped onto the background to get the texture and now you can see I'm going into gluing mode but that delicata gold is a really nice ink pad if you guys haven't used it um, that was the first delicata I had been introduced to and since then I've gotten the silver and the black and they're all shimmery and they're all really nice the thing is they're a pigment or you know some type of pigment so you do have to make sure that the ink sets before you move on because you will smear it so trying to get that to stay down that's a clock face that's a Tim Holtz die another big die and I've cut it into pieces and I'm just piecing it on the two different canvases adding a little more texture I like I like to get dimension and texture onto these things and so the 3d part comes in with the florals that I've created because they pop off the canvas they're not flat smacked up against a journal page they are popped up because all I did was to take those and heat them and bend them and you can see that we now have flowers that are dimensional to go onto our canvas so there again I'm just gonna go in and figure out where I want the placement and I'll give you some final shots and uh, you know all that end of the video stuff but check the i cards go over and see what shell has created this sunday and you know watch the playlist if you haven't seen it before and subscribe you know that way you get notifications when i do something if you like this or you know if you don't like it you can always fast forward through things or uh, move on but um, that way you have an opportunity to see what it is I'm doing and I'm in a number of different collaborations and some of them have some giveaways so you might like that um, we got one going on right now and um, it's going on for three weeks so check out that one um, that one is I see inspiration conspiracy hop and I'll put a link above and that's about it for me so thanks for stopping by today guys be sure and give me your comments you know I, I only can do what you want if you let me know uh, what you want if this is too fast and you need more description you know tell me if you need me to explain things better and I can slow things down but honestly this is over an hour of videotaping and that doesn't include all of the processes that I went through so you know, I don't think most people want to sit through over an hour of me doing this when they can get the gist of things. And you can always ask me questions, so feel free to do that. Um, I'm happy to help out at any time. Um, I usually respond quite quickly to any comments that are left. And I appreciate you. You know, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the people that come and visit me because my channel uh, cannot grow without your support and I only do this because of you because you say you want to see it and you enjoy it and without you you know there's no point to doing this so you know let me know let me know if this is really the kind of content that you want or you know what you'd like to see more of because I'm a mixed media artist I do a number of different things you know I work with journals I work with alcohol I make cards I do the very basic things I sell for fun stampers journey I um, do watercolor I do painting um, you know a lot of different things you're gonna find on my channel so don't be surprised if it's not always your cup of tea because like I said I do a lot of different things but that's me because I enjoy variety and if you enjoy variety you'll enjoy my channel so that's it guys thanks for stopping by enjoy the photos